Hey everyone, Assalamu alaikum. So today we are going to study about the model analysis and this was a very highly requested video but I came up with it very late so I'm really sorry for that. Anyways, today we are going to study about three analysis. These are the Pons analysis, the Linder Hart analysis and the Korkos analysis. And in the upcoming videos we will be studying about the rest of the analysis. So Pond analysis would be the first one. And one more thing, I would like to call the Linder Hart analysis as the Linder Hart similarity. Similarity because this analysis is very similar to the Pons analysis. So once we learn about the Pons analysis, we will be able to know what this analysis is just by this term similarity. So I would say, and you should also say that it is Linder Hart similarity. <laughs> okay. Anyways. Now, the next one is the Korkos analysis and I would call it as the Korkos addition. Korkos addition because he also made an analysis which is similar to these two but he added one more thing. So that is why we call it or I call it and you should also call it the Korkos addition. Okay. So let's study the Pons analysis first. Pons analysis. So what Pond did was that he measured the four maxillary incisors. He measured the four maxillary incisors and then he established the width of the arch. That means if I measure four maxillary incisor, I will be able to know the width of the arch. I can expect a width of the arch. Okay. So what he did, first of all, he measured from this incisor to this this is the lateral incisor and from here to here here to here and here to here and then he added all these four and he got si which is the sum of incisors it is the sum of incisors incisors okay then what he did he measured from one premolar to the other premolar and while we are measuring it it has to be measured from the distal end of the occlusal groove distal end so this is the occlusal groove and this is the distal end because this is the midline so this is not towards the midline it is away from the midline so this is the distal end distal end of the occlusal groove he measured from the distal end of the occlusal groove from one premolar to the other premolar and he called it as the measured premolar value mpv mpv I'll just write it here so that it gets easier. So we calculated the SI and then we calculated the MPV, okay, which is the measured premolar value. And he also measured from one molar to the other molar. And for that, he took the mesial pit on the occlusal surface. So this is the mesial pit. So he measured from one mesial pit to the other mesial pit of the first molar. And that he called as the MMV, measured molar value. Now we have these three values. So we measured something. Now we will calculate something. So I would calculate from one premolar to the other premolar and I would call it as CPV, calculated premolar value. And we will calculate the distance between the first molar to the first molar on this side and we will get CMV, which is the calculated molar value. So we have two measured values. And we have the two calculated values. Now, how do we calculate it? So to calculate it, this thing comes into play. So what we do, we take SI. There is a formula for this. So SI into 100 by 80. And for the CMV, we have SI into 100 by 64. So this is how we can calculate the premolar value and the molar value. And for measuring it, we'll take a caliper and measure from one premolar to the other and from one molar to the other. All right. Now, let's see an example for this. So suppose this is the cast of the patient and you can see there is a malocclusion. So what we do, we have to calculate the sum of incisors. So we will measure from here to here using caliper, here to here, here to here. And we'll take the greatest dimension, greatest mesodistal width. Okay. So we got the sum of incisor. For example, let's say this is 8 mm and this is also 8 mm. And since the lateral is little smaller, I'll, I will say it is 7 mm and 7 mm. Okay. So now the SI would be 7 plus 8 plus 8 plus 7. So that will make 30 mm. 
Now I'm going to measure from the distal end of the occlusal groove of one premolar to the distal end of the occlusal groove of the other premolar. Now I'm measuring this with the caliper and this will give me the this will give me the measured premolar value. Let's suppose it is 32 mm, 32 mm. Okay. So now next I will measure from one molar to the other molar. So that will be from the mesial pit of the occlusal surface of one molar to the mesial pit of the occlusal surface of other molar. So that is the MMV. Let's suppose it is it is 36 mm okay so these things we measure we measured the sum of incisors the premolar value and the molar value we measured these things now we have to calculate something and for calculating we are applying a formula so for cpv cpv we learned that it is si into 100 by 80 okay now to calculate it now we'll just put in the values and we'll get SI was, our SI was 30 mm, 30 into 100 by 80. That will give me 37.5. Okay, so I got 37.5 mm. And then we have the CMV, which is the calculated molar value. So that will also be calculated using the formula here which is SI into 100 by 64. So we'll put in the values. We'll get SI was 30 into 100 by 64. And we'll get 46.8 mm. Okay. Now let's compare these calculated values with the measured value. So here we find that our calculated premolar value is 37.5 and measured was 32 mm. So the measured is less. That means we need to expand our arch here. That means this arch is narrow and we have to expand the arch. All right. And same thing here you can see. This is calculated molar value and that is 46.8 and we measured it to be 36 mm. So here also the arch is narrower and we need to expand it. We need to have lateral expansion. Okay. So that was about the Pons analysis. This is how we do it. One important point to note here is that if we are considering the mandibular arch, if we are doing the Pons analysis on the mandibular arch, we have to take distobuccal cusp of the first permanent molar. So we have to use the distobuccal cusp and the upper one we were using the Measle pit. Next, we have the Linder Hearth analysis. The Linder Hearth analysis. So, let's do it here only. The Linder Hearth analysis. So, this is just very similar to the Pons analysis, only the formula is changing. So, what he did, he changed the formula. Here we have the calculated premolar value and the calculated molar value. The formula is si into 100 by 85 and si into 100 by 64 so this one the calculated molar value is same as that of the points but the premolar value is changing here it is 85 and in the points analysis it was 80 remember okay now our point analysis have some drawbacks the drawbacks let me tell you here so this was um, our point analysis. So the drawbacks are lateral incisors because the maxillary laterals of the teeth which are most commonly missing from the oral cavity. So this could be missing. So if this is missing, we cannot make this analysis, right? Because we need to measure it. Also, uh, we can also have peg-shaped laterals, peg-shaped laterals. So if the shape of the lateral is not normal, then also the measurement will change. Okay, and this analysis was done in French population. It was done in French population. So this is not universal. It might not be applicable to other people, other population, right? And also it does not tell anything about the skeletal malocclusion. Skeletal, skeletal malocclusion because we are measuring about, we are measuring just the teeth. Now let's study about the Korkhus analysis. Kor, 
his analysis okay so here i was calling it as corcus addition addition because this is also similar to the uh, analysis we studied before so what he did he he determined the ideal arch width using the linder hearth analysis so he took the linder hearth analysis and he found out the arch width arch width okay so he applied this formula and what addition he did was he took the midpoint from inter premolar line to a point in between the two maxillary incisor so he drew one line from the one premolar to the other premolar and then he drew a line like this i'll just take a different color so he drew a line and then he took a midpoint on that line and he drew a line from the central incisor to this midpoint so he got this value and in the lower arch also you'll get this value which is l u l l so according to corkus for a given width of the upper incisor for a given width of the upper incisor a specific value of distance exists between the midpoint of the interpremolar line okay to a point between the two maxillary incisor so if you have procline teeth for example our teeth is procline so it will be something like this okay so in that case the value will increase and if we have retrocline teeth for example this way then the value will decrease okay also the value we get in the mandibular arch should be 2 mm less than the value we get in the maxillary because we have studied that normally there is 2 mm over jet there is 2 mm over jet okay so this was about the corcus analysis So in the next video we will be studying about the Ashley Howe's analysis the Bolton's analysis so hope you like the video please give a thumbs up now you can be a part of Dr Teeth Academy just go to our facebook page and check how to apply also we'll be giving out a book of orthodontics by Gurkeet Singh to one of our viewers so please stay tuned subscribe for regular updates and to stay updated with the contest which is coming up soon thanks for watching allah hafiz